Good morning, how are you? I hope you slept well. I'm still talking about the gifts of the Spirit here as outlined by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 10. There's nine different spiritual gifts, but if you'd like, you can put them into three different categories. You have the vocal gifts, which is the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, and the gift of prophecy. Then you have the revelatory gifts, which is... Uh, the gift of the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. And then you have what's called the power gifts, which is the gift of faith, uh, the gifts, plural, it's the only one that's plural, uh, the gifts of healing, and then you have the working of miracles. And today I want to deal with the gift of faith and the gifts of healing. Um, what makes this a little bit more complicated is that the Bible says that there are different kinds of faith. In Romans chapter 12, Paul talks about we have been given a measure of faith. Uh, the prophet Habakkuk in chapter 2 verse 4 talks about the just shall live by his faith. But also the apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 lists faith as a fruit of the spirit. And so I kind of want to break this down. So if you go to Romans 12 verse 3, he says, For by the grace given me, and this is Paul speaking, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Now, in the context of this chapter, because Romans chapter 12 actually has another list of gifts that God has given as he sees fit. And so before he prepares to list that, I believe what he's essentially saying is by the grace or by the ability of God given to me, because one of uh, Paul's gifts was leadership. He was an apostle. And so... Um, I believe what he was saying is, you know, according to how God, God has graced him, he was able to give them this sort of wisdom to prevent pride. And how was he going to um, try to get them to not be prideful, but think of themselves in a sober way by accepting whatever measure of faith or accept whatever level of gifting that God had given them. Because as he goes on to talk about it in that chapter, he talks about, well, if you have a gift of prophecy, then prophesy. If it's leadership, you know, then lead, you know, whether it's mercy giving, even teaching is listed in there. And so that's basically what he's saying. And in the Hebrew language, as well as the Greek language, uh, faith is actually a character trait. Um, in Hebrew, it's emuna, it means steadfastness, and it comes from the word emun, uh, which means faithful. Um, if you go to the Greek, it's I believe it's pistes, and it means faithfulness, and, or like the quality of one who's uh, able to be trusted. And then when you go to Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, that's when faith is listed as a one of the fruits of the Spirit. Now, in the words of the great teacher, Derek Prince, the difference between uh, fruit and gift is fruit speaks of character, but gift speaks of ability. And so I asked the Lord to like, like kind of like break that down. It honestly made me laugh. But think about it as like a car salesman. Um, he's like a very rude, he's a very crude man, not really a good guy. Um, but he sells cars and he, the cars that he sells are very reliable. Um, they're brand new. Um, they last for several years. Um, the cars that he sells, even though they're reliable, they're not a reflection of the man that's, you know, giving them out or distributing them. He just has the gift, you know, to be able to sell, you know, to do business and whatnot. But they're not, they're not actually a reflection of him. It's, if, if anything, it's actually a reflection of the manufacturer that these cars come from. He has nothing to do with these cars. Uh, he just pushes them in and pushes them out. So... I would define the gift of faith as an impartation from God to supernaturally believe him despite all logic. It's the supernatural ability to believe God despite any circumstances, logic, facts, tests, studies, articles, research, doctor's notes, diagnosis, whatever the case. It's the supernatural ability to believe God. Um, Mark chapter 11, I believe, is where we can see an example of this. Uh, when Jesus um, curses the fig tree, uh, they walk past it again, I believe, the following morning. And it was Peter that said, you know, Rabbi, look, you know, here's that tree that you cursed. And basically, uh, Jesus replies, have faith in God. But the actual Greek says, have the faith of God. And what's interesting is like, you know, much like the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge, how those are a supernatural deposit of the wisdom, because it's not man's wisdom or man's knowledge, but it's a supernatural deposit of something God knows, whether it be wisdom or whether it be knowledge. So the faith of God is a deposit of God's faith directly into you. And well, what do I mean by God's faith? You know, do I mean like, you know, God is a Christian and he attends his local church and prays three times a day? 
No, but I want you to consider the scriptures, you know, Isaiah 45, verse 5. Uh, where God says, I am God and there is none beside me. Uh, he told Jeremiah, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? So look at it from the perspective of Jesus. Um, whenever he was presented with a crisis, he never flinched. He didn't panic like everybody else was panicking. Why? Because he knew the character and the ability over every sickness and disease or whatever crisis. He knew the ability and authority of, of, of his father over all of that stuff. Um, consider uh, when he went to the synagogue leader Jairus' house because his daughter died. When he walks in there, he says, she's not dead, she's just sleeping. And remember, everybody laughed at him. I believe that was an operation of the gift of faith. Uh, another uh, way I would look at it is, is David, uh, before he was King David, and he was still just the shepherd boy. And he goes in, in the front line and, you know, he basically invokes the name of the Lord um, amongst, you know, Goliath, who was taunting Israel. He basically recounts uh, what God did for him with the lion and the bear. And he says, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like this one. I believe that was an operation of the gift of faith because honestly, uh, just looking at him, there would have been nothing for him to even have this kind of confidence that he did, even if he did kill, kill the lion and the bear. Uh, and the side note that uh, Goliath's real name would have been Goliath, and it literally means to uncover or reveal. So I believe part of what the gift of faith does, I believe it reveals the supernatural ability of and demonstrative power of God in the earth. Oh, goodness. So the next one is the gifts of healing. Uh, and this one um, was very puzzling and frustrating for me because um, it's the only one that is plural. Like, you know, and... All of the gifts have different administrations, you know, as I was saying before, with, you know, with like the word of knowledge, you, you can dream a word of knowledge. You can just be walking down the street and walk past someone and have a word of knowledge. But it's interesting because it's not called the gifts of the word of knowledge or the gifts of the word of wisdom. It's just the gift, you know, I mean, singular. So I was really curious as to why gifts of healing, you know, why is that plural? And it is my personal belief that there's different, it's because there's different kinds of healing. Just because someone needs healing, it doesn't mean that whatever healing they need is um, physical. Um, I believe there's different levels, there's different realms of healing. Uh, I believe there is, of course, physical healing. I believe there is emotional healing. Um, I even believe that there is a healing that can come about through teaching by um, being enlightened on something that you did not know and causing you to shift perspectives. I believe that can be a form of healing. So, um, the Greek word used there for uh, gifts is the word charisma, and it's where we get the word charisma. It literally means a favor which one receives without any f merit of his own. So, literally, the gifts of God are given, they are not earned, much like everything else we receive from God. Um, and the Greek word for healing is iama, and it literally uh, translates as a means of healing, remedy, or medicine. So, I, like I said, I think it's plural because there's different levels of healing that are needed in the earth, and not all of them are necessarily physical. Um, like, for example, I believe that there are certain worship leaders or even certain musicians who probably carry this gift. Uh, if you go to Isaiah 61 verse 3, because one of the things that music can do is it can heal. Uh, if you've ever feel down or if you've ever felt depressed, you might put on a certain uh, song and immediately feel better. If you go to Isaiah 61 verse 3, uh, it says, Yes, provide for those in Zion who mourn, giving them garlands instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a cloak of praise instead of a heavy spirit. A heavy spirit can uh, be translated as depression. Um, I believe that there's certain people probably like uh, you'll see your pastors probably flowing this uh, counselors. I believe I even believe poets and writers, uh, authors carry this gift. But I believe that there is a certain uh, level of healing that can come through uh, writing uh, or even just counseling. Uh, Psalm 147 verse 3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Psalm 34 verse 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. So um, I think that's just one way uh, it can show up the way you talk to people. Um, as a matter of fact, some of your favorite comedians uh, probably have a gift of healing and operation in their life, whether it be Will Smith, Kevin Hart. I believe even Betty White probably had this gift and operation in her life because of the joy and laughter that she brought about wherever she went. 
Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22 says, A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. So even laughter can be a form of healing. Um, but I believe the gift of faith and the gifts of healing can go together. Uh, if you go to Matthew chapter 8, when Jesus encounters the army officer who had a servant at home who was sick, Jesus said, you know, okay, cool, I'll go to your house. And he says, no, just say the word and he'll be fine. That was where his faith was at. And so that's where the Lord met him. And the Lord just said a word and he was healed. Um, I believe, again, uh, even words, um, people who, I guess, who did with... Um, Anything, I guess, that involves talking to people or, or whether it be writing, I believe that can be another form of healing. Uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 4 says, uh, Gentle words are a tree of life. A deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. And, and then, of course, you see the... Because if you do have this gift, not, it doesn't show up the same way with everybody. Some people, um, it, like I said, it could be through music, it could be through talking or whatever, or it could be through laughter. But, of course, you also see it. Some people, uh, it shows up... Um, Specifically in their hands, uh, I've heard stories about people's hands being warm or maybe their hand is tingling and they lay upon wherever it is that people need uh, healing. Uh, if you go to Matthew chapter 8 verse 2, it says, Then a man with a skin disease came to Jesus. The man bowed down before him and said, Lord, you can heal me if you will. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man and said, I will be healed. And immediately the man was healed from his disease. Um, I even believe that deliverance the casting out of devils is another form of healing if you go to luke chapter 4 verses 40 to 41 um did i write that down oh yeah it says at sunset the people brought to jesus all who had various kinds of sickness and laying his hands on each one he healed them verse 41 moreover demons came out of many people shouting you are the son of god so that right there shows that certain People that need healing um, in their bodies, it could be because of the presence of a devil there. So certain healings may not happen unless they go through some kind of form of deliverance. So this is just some of the ways uh, the, uh, the gifts of healing can show up. Um, and I just really hope this provides some clarity. <laughs>